Uh, my name is Ron Bogle and I live about an hour and a half from Melbourne and uh, I live in Mombolk and it still has a lovely rural type feel about it. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. I've been growing peonies for about 20 years now. Peonies are so special to me because they're such a unique flower and it's such a unique, rare, slow growing plant. But the variation of colours and sizes and shapes, they just, they're never boring. For years, I approached growing peonies in a straightforward manner as a nurseryman. But none of these straightforward rules apply to these plants because everything to do with peonies is back to front. They shut down growing in summer and when it's cold in autumn, the root system is activated. Once I learnt this, I fertilised them in the winter, when it was freezing cold, I started feeding my plants organic matter and fertiliser, and the following spring, they nearly flew out of the ground. In regards to planting a tree, Peony, what we're looking for is full sun. The more sun we have, the more flowers you're going to get and the neat of the bush you're going to get. So we're looking for a planting hole around a metre or just under is fine. So we loosen the soil. And then here we have four and a half litres of white lime, agricultural lime or garden lime, not dolomite lime. Spread this all over our planting hole. And now I'll add the manure. Chicken manure, cow manure, fantastic. It might seem like a lot, but tree peonies are very hungry plants and mix it as best as I can. Now I'll put the plant in. I'll tap the pot off. Now we do not need to tease a tree peony. The roots are very tender and fleshy, so I'm just going to drop it in the hole. Backfill, roughly the same depth as the soil, and then I'll water it in. With some fish emulsion. Seaweed's okay, but it's rather weak. Fish emulsion, very smelly, but it really does the trick. And we'll give the plant the whole nine litres all over the planting hole. As long as you have a minimum winter chill of two to five degrees for two weeks, that is all the chilling they require and they'll just flower happily, no problem at all. Often people say to me, I've seen a tree peen, it's a, just an ugly looking plant. And when I ask them where it's growing, they say, oh, under a big tree. And I'll say, well, there, there it is for you. It's trying to get away from that tree and find the sun so it can flower. There are three main types of peonies, herbaceous, tree peonies, and etos, which are often called intersectionals. Now, here we have a herbaceous peony. It's a, uh, basically not a woody stem. These essentially flower very late, from mid-November to late November. This one, obviously, is very tight in bud. But this variety here, Coral Charm, is an unbelievable, exceptional peony. This has come from a warmer clime. That's why they're flowering at this point in time. And the most often question I get asked is, I have a peony in my garden and it just refuses to flower. It's most probably an old variety of herbaceous peony. Throw it away and start with a tree peony. They are guaranteed to flower. You will never be disappointed. Of course, we, with the woody structure of a tree peony, we're going to have a sizeable shrub, roughly a metre by a metre in 10 years. But in flower, they are actually quite a large plant. And now we move on to the new race called Etos. These are a cross between tree peonies and herbaceous peonies. The colour range in Etos is vast. Anything can happen. Reportedly, a specimen in the US had 150 flowers at five years of age, which is incredible. They'll flower up to six weeks and they make an excellent cut flower. They can be brought inside 
and you can enjoy the pleasure inside as well as in the garden. This is called Tamafuyo, and Japanese names have meanings. It means jeweled lotus. And when you look into this flower, you will just see why. It's the most gorgeous blush of pinks. It's very difficult to propagate, and I pull out all stops. I'm growing as many as I can, but I rarely, if ever, have any in stock. They just grow legs and walk away. This is another one of my 10 out of 10 favourites. And it comes from the province of Gansu in China. And I obtained these plants from a lady in Keelor who was importing them 10 to 15 years ago. And it gets the ultimate rating. Perfect form, and it has typical Chinese doubling in the fact that the centre of the flower is fluted out. What makes a flower 10 out of 10 for me is the blend of colours and the doubleness and the overall effect it has on you when you first view it. <laughs> 